Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Plant Services Tool Belt Podcast. And I got to tell you, I'm excited about this one because this one's going to talk about event travel, something that a lot of us have been hoping to do this year. I know that uh, for many people, the Delta variant put a wrinkle in people's travel plans. But today we're here to talk about the SMRP Annual Conference, uh, which is coming up very soon in the last week of October in St. Louis. It's also definitely want to mention that there's a virtual component too. So no matter if you're uh, stuck in the plan, stuck at home, uh, can't travel this year, or whether you can travel and you want to head over to St. Louis, uh, I'm joined today by Adrian Messer, and he's the leader of Strategic Accounts for UE Systems. He's going to tell us all about what to expect at this year's conference. Um, Adrian, thank you so much for being here. Well, appreciate the invite and a pleasure to be with you as well, Tom. Well, so, you know, you and the UE Systems team have been pretty involved in the SMRP's board, and I know um, Chase Sasser is involved with the conference a lot. Could you tell us a little bit uh, about your involvement with the board and the conference and sort of what we can expect this year? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've been involved with SMRP, I would say, for at least 10 years on uh, various committees. Uh, the last several, I've been involved on the conference committee and glad to serve as the chair of the uh, this year's annual conference. So uh, I know our committee has been working and meeting regularly and making decisions uh, to put on what we think is going to be a great event. Um, and it's going to be another first for SMRP this year, um, where last year was the first ever all virtual event. Uh, this year is going to be the first ever hybrid event. So we're excited about that. So uh, we will be meeting face to face in St. Louis and um, there will be a virtual component where there will be select sessions that will be live streamed and recorded. So uh, that's another benefit to having that virtual component as those uh, sessions will be recorded and people can go back and look at those at a later time. Yeah, I remember last year, there was a lot of feedback from people who were able to attend virtually. It was sort of unlocked the locked door to SMRP for those who weren't able to travel. And it, it's great to hear that uh, the SMRP committee has chosen to do that again this year and go virtual. <laughs> Yeah, we're excited about it. And one of the striking things about last year being all virtual uh, were the number of international attendees that we had. And I know that's been a goal of SMRP is to kind of broaden our outreach and having that virtual component allowed for that. So uh, excited to see hopefully some of those uh, first time attenders from last year. Hopefully those will be back on for the virtual event this year. Okay. And I took a quick look at the program, which is now, I believe, posted up on the SMRP annual conference site for anyone who wants to go take a look at what's going to happen. Can you tell us about uh, the basic breakdown? Uh, the, like, is there a workshop day and will the exam be offered for CMRP? Sure. Uh, just like uh, previous conferences, there will be pre-conference and post-conference workshops. So all those are listed. Uh, I think they were just posted this week, actually, uh, under the agenda for the uh, SMRP annual conference website. So you can take a look at those and it's certainly not too late to sign up for any that you'd be interested in. Um, the exams will not be offered this year. So uh, as of about two years ago, uh, the CMRP and CMRT certification switched to an all electronic format. Mm -hmm. And those are offered at Pearson View testing centers. And those testing centers are located, uh, there are literally thousands of them globally. So so again, if you just go to smrp.org and click on certification, you'll then see a link for a testing center search where you can find the one that's closest to you. Okay. Now, that's great to know. Thanks, Adrian. Um, maybe we could tackle some of the issues that are, well, that are going to be in the program this year, some of the that are facing maintenance and reliability. I know it's been a, a really crazy rough year and a half for most everybody. Um, the bright side is that, you know, in a recent survey with plant services, our readers told us that many plants, if not most, are sort of snapping back to normal operations after a year of either a long overtime or shared production with things like PPE to help serve the national interest. Um, what are some things that you're hearing in the field about what's happening in maintenance reliability? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of that as well. And, uh, you know, fortunately for me, uh, my day job, the, the job that pays the bills, I, uh, I have been able to get out and still do some traveling and visit some plants and factories during the last year and a half. And, you know, I've kind of seen um, exactly what you just described. Uh, matter of fact, I was in a plant just this week 
and uh, as an incentive to not only keep people, but also to keep people working, uh, they were offering their production operators double time. And uh, I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of uh, extending shifts, so maybe going from you know eight hours to 10 hours or 10 hours to 12 hours. And then also extending the work week, you know, going from five days to six days, even in some cases, seven days. So I think the problem now is just finding uh, workers and finding workers that um, are willing to come in and work those those types of hours. Uh, but, yeah, certainly things are ramping back up. And now the struggle is, you know, having the right staff and, and those numbers to meet uh, those production requirements. You know, we're, we're hearing that, too, especially where uh, if, if anywhere from hiring uh, new employees to just finding warm bodies to get the work done. We've seen the emphasis on operator based care to the degree that that can align with uh, maintenance reliability best practices. Yeah. Um, you know, the other two challenges we've heard about are supply chain and cybersecurity. You know, supply chain is a, a, a rollover of the effect of the, that COVID's had and also cybersecurity where those criminals are getting bolder. Are you hearing about, about those two issues as well? Yeah, somewhat. And uh, and as kind of a, I guess, a sneak peek uh, for the closing panel. So the last couple of years, we've had a lot of positive feedback from our closing session. And the last two years, we've done uh, panel discussions. And this year's panel discussion is going to focus primarily on IIoT uh, initiatives, and I can only imagine that eventually that discussion will get turned to cybersecurity and uh, and some of the things that we've seen happen over the last, uh, well, specifically last few months uh, in, in kind of a bad way with a couple of companies that have made news uh, with certain you know, breaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, certainly that, that's going to be of interest, and I can imagine, again, you know, with that closing panel, uh, that will that discussion will eventually turn to that. You know, it's always good in panels like that to understand that you're not alone when it comes to, especially cybersecurity challenges. It's something which people either can't talk about very much due to legal requirements or simply don't want to admit to. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems like it's the rare plant though that hasn't been targeted in some way or had to experience some kind of attack or response plan. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's uh, kind of what we saw with the, the two incidents in particular that made <laughs> major news, you know, earlier this year. So, yeah, I, I think that's something that's on uh, on everybody's minds right now, especially with all the different uh, initiatives that are out there with focus on sensors and bringing assets online. You know, it, it's got to be a topic of discussion. and It's got to be an area that's got to be addressed. Wow. Well, let me switch to um, the exhibit hall since you brought up sensors and new technologies. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the new technologies that you're seeing move into this space that people can experience if they go in um, to the live event? And will it be sort of virtual booths to step into? Yeah, there's not going to be a virtual expo hall component like there was last year, All right. uh, but there will be, again, those live stream sessions that the attendees will have access to, uh, not only during the, the live event, but also recorded. They can go back and watch uh, at a later date in case they, you know, have a meeting that comes up or, you know, uh, that their schedule schedule is not as flexible. Uh, as far as the expo hall, though, uh, you know, we've got 60 plus exhibitors, which we're very pleased with. And, uh, you know, you know, for uh, I think over the last few days, we've had a couple drop off, but in place, we've had a couple come uh, come back to us and want to exhibit. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, people are getting, you know, a little more comfortable with their travel and, uh, you know, and able to uh, to kind of see, OK, yeah, this event's going to move forward. So, sure, we'd like to be a part of that. Uh, some of those new exhibitors are people in that IIoT and in kind of sensor space. So we're really excited about that. You know, SMRP, you know, the conference will never be, you know, a solely uh, a, a technology or software conference. But, you know, again, with more and more of those types of industries and, and initiatives coming into the marketplace, then we're, we're very excited to have that as a component of this year's conference. Well, and if I could follow up on that, too, for, for our last question about the conference here, um, the keynote has traditionally been someone who's either an inspirational speaker, uh, often drawn from the armed forces, telling us about their experience where either they learned skills that could transfer into maintenance reliability or simply talked about the ways that effective maintenance was instrumental to keeping their machines in operational state. And um, I've seen the schedule in advance. It sounds like it's going to be a slightly different tech this year. Can you tell us about the keynote speaker? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, so we do have a, uh, a it is a different uh, kind of topic, but along the lines of cybersecurity, we have Eric O'Neill, who is a uh, best-selling author and former FBI counterterrorism and counterintelligence operative. Uh, so uh, he can speak exactly to some of the things that he has seen in some of his experience and I think probably provide some great insight. And, uh, you know, in case that, you know, maybe people haven't been thinking about cybersecurity, hopefully this will be a, a start of that. So we're super excited about having him as our keynote. And, um, yeah, this is something that's kind of been in the works for a little while. But again, I think he'll deliver a very uh, thought provoking um, presentation and certainly very timely, if nothing else. So, uh, again, yeah, we're super excited about that, but a little different, but certainly falls into the those lines of, uh, you know, some of these things that we've seen happen over the last several months. Yeah, I agree completely. It's so timely. And it, I know there's some confusion out there in, in plans uh, as to sometimes whose responsibility it is to develop a cyber response plan, um, what responsibilities maintenance function might specifically have anywhere from patching to exploring secure technologies. Um, and it's, it's great that the conference is gonna cover this issue in depth from the keynote to the closing panel. Yeah, yeah, it is. And hopefully we'll see some things come for full circle. And then, uh, you know, of course, we're going to have our emerging technology tracked again this year. So uh, I know some of those um, ideas and some of those challenges will get brought up in that track as well. Okay. And for everyone listening who's still using pen and paper, you're not alone, but get on this new technology <laughs> track because... Uh, the, the future is here and it's going to pull you pull you along with it. Although the people who are using pen and paper, they may be the safest because yeah, there <laughs> there's nothing electronic there. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. It, it's always funny, Adrian, when we ask in our survey what technology people use to collect data. Number one, by still a little smidge, but number one is still pen and paper, closely followed by uh, things like Excel Excel sheets. Yeah, um, I still I still see a lot of people with the little notepads in their pocket. You know the you know, pins in their pocket, you know, there's still a lot of that around. Well, Adrian, it's been great talking with you about the conference. For anybody who wants to learn uh, more about the conference or how to register, what's the best place for them to go to? smrp.org. And then if you're interested in the conference specifically, uh, up at the top of smrp.org, you'll see a link for events. And the first link that you'll see is the annual conference. And again, that'll take you to uh, where you can find the agenda, you can find descriptions of the track sessions and the workshops, facility tours, uh, as well as registration online. So uh, Certainly look forward to seeing uh, you in St. Louis, and I think it's going to be a great event. And if for no other reason, it's going to be a great chance to hopefully see some people, see some faces that uh, haven't been able to see in the last year and a half. So it's going to be exciting. It's been too long. It really has. And I know as far as plant services go, you'll see me down there and also our, our new managing editor, Anna Townsend. This will be your first major conference. So we're going to throw her in and... Uh, you know, it's, we, we know our, this industry that supports each other, so it won't be sink or swim. It's, it's going to be great for her to get to meet you and others, too. So Yeah, well, I c couldn't think of a better event for her to go to first time than SMRP's annual conference. So that'd be great. Agree. Well, then here's to St. Louis. And for everyone who wants that information, we'll put those links in the podcast notes. Uh, Adrian, once again, uh, thanks for being with us and good luck sharing the show. I can't wait to be there. And uh, from the start to the time when you pass over the gavel. So congratulations in advance. We'll see you soon. Yep. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. And thanks to you and Plant Services.